glory to God. Hallelujah. I just want to share with you what God has been putting in my spirit, the word that he gave me, hallelujah, to help us all throughout 2021. So I'm just going to start by praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, glory to God, even for this day. Father, we understand that we are nothing without you, God. Father, we understand, Lord, that because of you, we are everything, Lord God. Father, we just praise your holy name, God. We lift you up on today. We honor you and we bless you, God. We bless you with the fruit of our lips. And Lord, we just ask right now, Lord God, that you would just come, Lord, and speak to our hearts and speak to our minds, Lord. Penetrate our hearts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, those that will watch, those that will listen, Lord God, I thank you, Father, that this will be a life-changing word, that it will be information, instruction, Lord God, that will lead them into their destiny, oh God. Thank you for encouraging your people on today. Thank you for keeping your people. Thank you for watching over your people, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, for doing what only you can do, a new thing. That's what we proclaim, Lord, out with the old, Lord. Hallelujah. We want everything new, and we thank you for the new thing that you're doing in your people's lives in the name of Jesus have your way Holy Spirit only you can do it oh God in Jesus name we pray and it is so amen hallelujah thank you for joining me on today glory to God before I get into the word of God I really my, my scripture of the day today it says repent glory to God this year should be a year of much repentance much repentance you know i found myself even yesterday i was on my knees before i went to church on just repenting just asking lord forgive me any any thoughts that i had that are not of you anything that i've said lord i, I just want to be pleasing in your sight and it wasn't something that i necessarily had done but i just want to want to make sure anything in my heart that was not of God. I wanted it to be gone. And especially before you, you go into the house of God. So I, I, I implore you to take time to repent. Because you can't just walk around acting like you ain't done nothing. Some of our thoughts and our heart postures are not pleasing to God. And you must repent. Amen. Amen. Let this be the year of repentance for you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so the word that God is giving me on today, he says, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I looked up the word counsel and it, and, and it was a simple uh, 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 definition. It says to advise or to instruct. Many of us are listening and have listened in 2022 and years before to instruction and advice that was ungodly it did not come from god hallelujah and it was designed to pull you off course but god is saying hallelujah during this this new year the start of the new year do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly see you got to have discernment glory to god it got to agree anything that anybody says should be confirmation with what god has already told you glory to God and you got to agree with it in your spirit if it's something hallelujah that's contrary to what you know God said then you take that thing in prayer hallelujah do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly in this year you've had enough of what people think you had enough of their opinions you had enough of what they want you to do you had enough of what they think you should do hallelujah but only God knows the plans that he has as for you your counsel should come from the wonderful counselor the God Almighty that created you that made you that knows your beginning from your end hallelujah to your end he knows what he has for you he his word says he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end you got to follow the counsel of God there is a spirit of ungodly counsel running rampant in this earth today. It called up a shot, but I need you to understand. Hallelujah. 
That if you follow the Lord, if you seek the Lord, stop calling up people and get in prayer. Stop getting on the phone with people, telling them all your business, and they telling you what they done. It didn't work for them, and it ain't going to work for you. But if you get before the Lord, God can speak to you and give you instruction that's going to work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go with me to... Glory to God. First Kings chapter 13. Hallelujah. And I am going to start at verse nine. Let me give you a little bit of backstory. There's a, a young prophet and an old prophet. Glory to God. God told the young prophet something. He told him something not to do. Let's read on. Hallelujah. Verse nine. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord. This is from the word of the Lord. Saying, eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. He said, don't eat no bread, don't drink no water, and do not come the same way. Don't return the same way that you came. So if you came one way, you got you to gotta leave another way. You can't go back that same way. Did y'all hear that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't go the same way. Can I just stop right there? Don't go the same way. He says, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. Don't go the same way. And I'm saying it over so you can think about it. Because some of us been doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Don't go the same way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It ain't going to work. You got to go a different way. This season, 2023, what? Didn't work in 2022, ain't going to work in 2023. You're going to have to do something different. He's telling him you got to go a different way. He gave him instructions. Don't eat no bread. Don't drink no water. And don't come again by the same way that thou camest. Don't. Don't do it. That's the command. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Okay, he, he got that part right. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said to them, what way went he? So, so, so here it is. Somebody's watching him and then reporting back. To, to, you got people watching you. And then you got, you got people that don't want to see you go forward. So they'll say something to deter you. Because you're doing a good work. Oh, Ramanda. You're going about doing a good work. And the enemy want to stop you. So he'll use whomever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For the sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, saddle me the donkey. So they saddled him the, the donkey and he rode thereon and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, art thou the man of God that came is from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said, so you got to have discernment. You got to know who you talking to. You got to know who you talking to. Shouldn't nobody be able to just walk up on you like that. Hallelujah. You got to understand who you're dealing with. Hallelujah. Nobody should be able to come in your space and be able to talk to you and tell you something. Glory to God. You Before you even have a conversation, you got to be able to, to discern. Hey, 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 something ain't right about this one. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. 
And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord. Here we go again. Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Now you done heard the word. You done said it twice. Somebody asked, somebody else asked him to come stay with me. And what did he tell him in verse 9? He said, look, the word of the Lord already came to me. Now here comes the old prophet and, and asking him, come, come with me. Eat bread and, and drink water. And, and, and the word of the Lord, see, isn't it amazing that the old prophet asked him to do the very thing that God said no to. He was tempting him. He was tempting him to see. That's what the enemy is going to be doing. That's what he's been doing. Hallelujah. Tempting you to see if you're going to be obedient or you're going to be disobedient. If you're going to walk into in the counsel of the ungodly, I don't care what the title is. I don't care if the title is pastor, prophet, teacher, evangelist. If God gave you a word, you better listen to what God says. Hallelujah. It's amazing. He asked him to do the very thing God said no. The devil's job is to get you to disobey God. Disobedience is a sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. Well, well why you even got to tell somebody you a prophet? We, no one goes around saying what you are. They going to know you by your fruit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into that house that he may eat bread and drink water. But listen to what this sentence says. But he lied unto him. He lied and said that an angel told him. I'm going to help y'all today in churches and people, period. 1 John chapter 4, it says, try the spirit to see if it be of God. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. You got to try the spirit. It's not about the title. It's about the fruit and their character. You got to look at their life before you believe anything. It ain't about no title. It ain't how good you can pro uh, 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 preach the word of God. Do you live what you preach? Because if you don't live what you preach, you are lying. You live in a lie. So how are you going to tell me the truth? You can't receive everything that somebody is telling you. You got to try the spirit to see if it be of God. You got to have discernment. Ask God for discernment. Or you'll just go with anything. He said, I'm a prophet. The angel of the Lord came to me, told me that you need to come with me, eat with me, drink with me. God is not the author of confusion. He's not going to tell you something and tell somebody else something about your life. He does not operate in confusion. If God said something, God, that's what he meant. I don't care what they said. You heard what God said to you. And you are the one, hallelujah, that is responsible for keeping the commandment. He spoke to you. The mandate he spoke over your life. People get mad at me. They say, you, 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 you two are protective of your kids. You, you, why, why they can't stay tonight? Because God told me not to. He said to protect the anointing over their life. And I didn't, I didn't feel led to let them spend the night. I, I didn't feel led. No, they cannot go there. Why? Why? Because God said no. I don't care what you say. You can be mad at me. You can feel some type of way about it. But I'm going to follow the instructions of the Lord concerning my children. They don't have no business going to no parties. Hallelujah. People be all up in your business. This man ain't have nothing to do with this man. He went looking for him, seeking him out to tell a lie. And that's what the enemy is going to do. He went looking for this man. The enemy is sending people looking for you. You're doing a good work. You on the right path. And here come the devil with a lie. Here come the ungodly counsel. Here come the ungodly instruction.
vision. The Lord told me. Look at their life. Do it line up with the word of God. Look at the fruit that they bear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says he lied unto him. So, so here come the young prophet. He went back with them and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. Now the word of the Lord came this time. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, he disobeyed. The Bible said he went back with the man, with the old prophet, ate and drank. And then the word of the Lord came, oh my God, Jesus, from the old prophet to speak to the young prophet and tell him you disobeyed. This man lied, but now God really did speak to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and he said, but came his back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to eat, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the donkey to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. You mean to tip? Can I help you? Please. You can, you can end up losing your life from ungodly counsel. It can totally destroy you. This young prophet that heard what the word of the Lord say decided to listen to the old prophet who lied to him in the beginning. And he ended up losing his life. And a lion came and killed him. Just for being disowned. You ought to thank God. That you're not dead. Every time you disobey God. And you know you heard what God said. You ought to be giving God the praise for grace and mercy. But I come today to tell you. And this is the word of the Lord. Do not disobey what God has spoken into your life. Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. If you know that God said it, why would you listen to a lie? Why would you allow yourself to be deceived? If God said it, that's what he meant. In other words, don't disobey God. Obey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Very familiar passage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Genesis chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. We're going to start at verse 17. 8, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Out of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of knowing good, the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou, that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Did you hear that? In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He spoke a word. He said, don't eat of that tree, right? All right. So. Go back, go to chapter three and it's at verse one. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, he starts talking to the woman. Yeah, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Okay. So woman, you knew what God said, right? 
She heard what God said. God said it and she repeated it back. How in the world do we get it wrong when we can repeat it back and still fall into the devil trap? How in the world do you get it wrong when you know you got to be fully submitted to God? This spirit of disobedience, you got to curse it at the root. You got to learn how to follow instructions from the Lord. And I don't care who it is. Do not move. So here he comes with deception. Beguiled by a snake. That's what she was. Tricked by the enemy. He says, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. What? God says she's going to die. It's true. And that's how he tricked us. You can go ahead and sin. You can just ask for forgiveness. Go ahead and go to the hotel. Go ahead and be an adulterer. Go ahead and lie. You can be in a life of homosexuality. God will forgive you. He loves you. Hallelujah. You can lie, steal, and cheat. Yeah. Will you Will you die and go to hell? God won't really send you to hell as long as you try to be good. This is how the enemy talks to the people of God. You can take that. Nobody will know. They'll understand. Oh, God knows my heart. I can do. I can ask for forgiveness. Did you ever think about if you die in your sin? You don't get a chance to ask for forgiveness. Be not deceived, for God is not mocked whatsoever a man's soul that shall he reap. Disobedience is a sin. When you disobey, you are sowing seeds to your flesh and you will reap corruption. He told the woman, he said, you will surely die the day you eat thereof. Don't even touch it. Don't even touch the unclean thing. Anybody got some unclean things? I'm talking to those y'all around here smoking your blunts, picking up your cigarettes, smoking your weed, your vapes and all of that. It's the unclean thing. Oh, weed came from the earth. But God didn't tell you to use it. He said, have a sober mind. Well, we get you high so you ain't sober. Come on here, somebody. We gonna talk about it today. Glory to God. You shall surely die. That's what he told the woman. And here he come lying. Ungodly counsel. Ungodly counsel. Listen to this ungodly counsel. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He tricked her. If God wanted her eyes to be up, first of all, why would God want you to do good and evil? That's how people, you know why people can do good and evil? Because they're eating from the wrong tree. You got to eat from the tree of life. What tree are you eating from today? What tree are you eating from today? Because of somebody's ungodly counsel is causing you to eat from the wrong tree. That's unproductive, that's unfruitful, that's there to destroy your life. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Who Jesus and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Wait a minute before. If you read that. In Genesis chapter two, he told Adam first, because the latter part, he said, I'm going to make you a help me. Uh, 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 Eve wasn't even on the scene yet. Now, how in the world could he tell you the leader? And you go with it. Hallelujah. When you were given the word first. Let me help you on today. Hallelujah. Your family members can be used by the devil to bring you ungodly, ungodly counsel to get you off course with God. You got to be even family. It's what's familiar. Oh, they wouldn't do nothing to her. It ain't them. It's the devil. It's the devil himself using them. That's why you got to know God for yourself. And you got to know what he said and you got to follow what he said. He knew what God said and he ate it anyway. He ate the fruit anyway. 
Because he was listening to his wife, the woman that God gave him. But he sealed the head. And he heard it first. He was supposed to follow through. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She started to look at it. That's that lust of the eyes. She started to want to. She got curious. Hallelujah. See, the enemy will dangle something in your face. And then you get curious. Well, I, I wonder, it couldn't be that bad. I wonder what it, what, it, what it would be like. Let me just go over here and try it. It, it just can't be that bad. You forget all about what God said because you, you start yielding to the temptation of the devil. So they both ate the fruit. They were kicked out of the garden. They lost their place in the garden. Everything that they, they had everything in that garden. God gave them access to every. He said this one thing don't you do. And they did not follow directions. They were beguiled. They were tricked. Do not be tricked by the enemy. Don't you be tricked by the devil in this, this season, this new year. Because God is definitely doing a new thing. But in the new thing, you are going to have to obey. You got to obey the Lord. If he said it, that's what he meant. Hallelujah. Watch out for the family members as well. Please. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And then I'm going to talk about Saul. God gave me about Saul. And um, go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And this is a familiar passage as well. Glory to God. Y'all, this word is for me too. It's for me as well. Glory to God. We've all had a moment where we did not obey God. But this is going to be the year that we get it right. Amen. We're decreeing and declaring. We're going to follow God's instructions. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So the Lord is telling him, look. Smite the Amalekites. Kill King Agag. All these things. Don't take no sheep. Don't take nothing. Leave it all. Well, here comes Saul. He allowed the people to influence him. The ungodly council. Thank you, Jesus. And he did not follow what the Lord said unto him. And God said to him, he said, it repented me that I have made thee king because you didn't, you didn't do what I told you to do. He took Agag, the king of the Amalekites alive. I'm at verse eight and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. Did y'all hear that? He said, I want everything. I don't want their food. I don't want their, their sheep, their oxen. I want you to destroy everything. I gave you a commandment to utterly destroy everything. But everything that was valid and refused that they destroyed, things they had no use of. Oh, you want to keep the things that, that, that will benefit you. Did y'all hear that? Y'all catch that? I, 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 want, I want to hear. The, the, uh, I want to keep the things that benefit me. I know God said get rid of it. But it's benefiting me. It, it feels good to my flesh. So I'm going to get rid of the things that uh, they don't really give me no pleasure. Okay, God, you can have that. I ain't worried about that. But this over here, 
I'm not letting this go because this this benefiting my flesh right now. This feeding my flesh. So I'm, I'm not letting that go. I know you said let it go, God, but I'm just not ready. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't want to let that go right now. I'm going to keep it. I will not utterly destroy it, even though it's going to utterly destroy me. That condolable shot, the very thing that you're holding on to, hallelujah, that God is telling you to destroy. If you don't destroy it, it's going to destroy you. It's going to destroy your purpose. It's going to destroy your destiny. Hallelujah. Jesus, help us, Holy Ghost. Then the word of the Lord came unto Samuel. It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. He said, look, it repented me. That I made him king. He turned back from what I said. He went the opposite direction in what I told him to do. He didn't keep my commandments. He's not listening to me. Thank you Jesus. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said. Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. You don't halfway do what God tell you to do. You do everything that God tell you to do. Oh, Lord, well, I, I let one uh, person go. I'm going to keep this one over here. Lord, I I, I, uh, I, I stopped going to that place, but this one over here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep going over here. Well, I did that one that you told me to do, but I know this one right here, but, but bear with me, Lord. You know my heart. You can't halfway, you can't halfway obey. Any part of disobedience, it, it makes it all disobedience. If God said cut it all off, let it all go, then you got to let it all go. He said, I perform what God told me to do. You're lying. You have obeyed God, which made you be disobedient. Which made you be disobedient. You took ungodly counsel. If you read on, let's, let's, let's read on. He said, I performed the commandment of the, and of the Lord. And Samuel said, what meaning then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen, which I hear. He said, what, what, wait a minute. You said you performed it. Why do I hear sheep and oxen? Didn't God tell you to utterly destroy everything? Did, 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 didn't God, why do I hear sheep? You didn't do that. You didn't do what God told you to do because I wouldn't hear sheep and oxen. You were supposed to kill everything. And Saul said, they have brought, they, they, listen to this. Listen to this clearly. I'm in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 15 for those who want to go back and refer. They have brought them from the Amalekites for the people spared the best of the sheep. And of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Wait, 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 wait. They, 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 they for the people. Didn't God tell you though? So you, you listen to ungodly counsel? I've had someone to tell me something that was not of God. I know I heard what God said. I went along with it. They, they didn't have to go through my consequences. They didn't have to reap what I had to reap. They didn't have to feel what I had to feel. They went on with their lives. But I had to deal with it because I heard what God said. But the Bible says that. He allowed. You are the king. You have authority. You have the, the, the authority to say yes or no, but you yield it to what they and the people said for your life. He lost his kingship. He lost his place. He was no longer king because of what he had done. What he had not done. He disobeyed God after God told him to do something. He allowed the people to get in his ear and say, hey, 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 oh, look at, look at all this stuff. This will be good to sacrifice. But let me tell you what God said. He said, how the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices in, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? 
Behold, to obey is better than the sacrifice. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Whoo, that's deep. When you're disobedient, you open up the door. For, that's a form of witchcraft. You're opening up the door for the enemy to come in your life. When you're stubborn, you, you, you have idolatry. Meaning you idolize yourself and what you want instead of what God wants. Stubborn. Don't want to listen. Don't want to no, know. I don't want to do it that way. The ungodly counsel. As you listen to the passages that were read on today, each one of them, it was somebody else that caused them to fall. Ungodly counsel. I need you to hear this today. You got to have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to the church and to you individually. And if you are unsure about something, it's okay to go on a fast to get clarity. But whatever you hear the Lord thy God speaking to you, you must follow it. And not follow it partly, but whole. The whole entire thing that God said. It's too late in the hour. Jesus is at the door. He's coming soon for us to be being disobedient and following ungodly counsel. And I want to reiterate that there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. Don't have an itchy ear going to every church service just to hear something because they proper lying and not prophesying. Be careful what you allow people to speak over your life. Because God can give you a word for yourself. Write in your prayer time with him. And it will be straight from the father. Hallelujah. Do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Only do what the Lord tells you to do. Glory to God. I love you. Hallelujah. Until next time. Bye-bye.